Without doubt, this century's challenge is climate change. And within that challenge, how to keep the lights on and ditch the fossil fuels that dominate all our economies. Renewables take us part of the way, but not nearly enough if we're all to stay warm and mobile and frankly, out of the dark. The Moltec Stable Salt Reactor is gathering support in Canada and the UK. It's nuclear, but not the nuclear that we think we know, and a far cry from the technology of the 20th century. First of all, give us, if you like, the elevator pitch. I mean, what's the real proposal that Moltex hopes to bring to the market? It's about climate change. The reason we exist is because of climate change. And our belief that the only way that we will really combat climate change is by making fossil fuels unattractive economically. In other words, we need to find sources of energy that are cheaper than burning gas. And that's what led us to the design that we have for our nuclear reactor. It's clean energy, but unusually for nuclear, it's also cheap. There's a different form of uh, nuclear fission that is very much uh, smaller, safer, simpler reactors that have almost no moving parts, have no contained pressure. It's all of that that provides us with a very much simpler solution. Fundamental reactions are the same, but the way in which it's engineered is completely different. And the urgency is quite extreme now, do you think? People talk about climate emergencies. Very few people are acting as though there actually was one. But there really is. And I came very quickly to the conclusion that unless you can actually drive the cost of nuclear down to the point where it's cheaper than burning gas and coal, then the world will continue burning gas and coal. The UK may stop because we're rich enough to make the sacrifice. That'll make no difference to the planet. You can't have a system that's 100% renewables. If all we had was wind turbines, we would need the most enormous amount of energy storage for all those times when there is no wind and massive overcapacity for when there is some wind. And the costs of that simply don't work. You know, our view is we should be backing all of the technologies that could make a contribution. So renewables by day and nuclear by night? Yeah, why not? Renewables when it's windy nuclear when it's not. So it's a partnership? Yes, should be. Where does your certainty come from that what you're putting forward really has that contribution to make? It's driven because it's a reactor that can be built at a lower cost than a combined cycle gas turbine power station. Simple as that. How clean and safe is it? All nuclear today is safe. The way nuclear today has got safe is by spending an awful lot of money to make it so. What we do is take away the hazards so that you don't need that level of extreme engineering to make it safe. So you're saying that the, the stable salt reactor works much better in terms of how it operates and how it can operate in tandem with a renewable energy programme than one of the larger stale pressurised nuclear reactors. When the renewables aren't delivering, which happens regularly, you need something which can fill the gap. Nuclear in the way that we do it can. Nuclear in the pressurised water field can't. Because it's too expensive? It's completely unaffordable. The guys on the Moltex team think that this really is the answer to killing off fossil fuel energy generation and balancing in with renewables and other sources of uh, intermittent energy supply. How do you feel about working on a project like this? The new nuclear, this advanced uh, nuclear field, is really where we see great challenges in engineering today. It's somewhere with huge potential to put a lot of academic and, and technical knowledge into and then have a great impact for the environment, uh, for society as a whole. So what's your vision for how we should be running our energy requirements 20, 30, 40 years down the line? By 2050, we should not be burning any coal or gas for electricity production. Electricity requirement that's coming down the pike at us as more and more people think about how they transport themselves, how they heat their homes, how urgent is the situation? 
have you seen the, I don't know if you've seen the graph that shows what we need to do to our carbon emissions and the longer we leave it, how much more dramatic that needs to be. Uh, it suggests that we've got about seven or eight years before we get to the point where it becomes impossible. Uh, and so we need to move extremely fast. The International Energy Agency every year do a forecast of what the power production in the world will be over the, the coming 20, 30 years based on what's actually happening, what governments say they're doing. And their projection is that coal burning will stay at the same level it is today, not fall at all, and that gas burning will double. That's a catastrophe, absolute catastrophe for the planet. If we build five of these things in the UK and that's all Maltex ever does, we have utterly failed. So what, what's your vision of success then? Uh, a measurable impact on carbon emissions globally, which is a big thing to say. Right? Well, you know, if we're not aiming for that, then what are we doing?